Hello and thank you for watching this next video. Here we're going to be looking at uh, another hypothesis test on a single population variance. Now this exercise may look familiar. I guess I've gotten a little bit lazy. I'm recycling some of my problems from module 9 videos because in module 9 we were testing uh, the population uh, location. We were testing the mean of the distribution. Where does the distribution lie relative to a hypothesized value? Now, instead of looking at the location of the distribution, we're looking at the shape of the distribution. And so we're going to perform a test on the variance of that distribution. So here, maybe the context will be familiar. Maybe that'll make it a little bit easier. I don't know. Let's get into it, and uh, we'll talk about things as they as they arise. So here we have that local farmer who's producing hay for nearby cattle ranchers. The hay is rolled into 50 pound bales and are sold by quantity. Therefore, when a rancher buys 100 bales of hay, they can expect to receive 5,000 pounds. To ensure the cattle ranchers are getting what they expect, the farmer periodically samples the 30 uh, hay bales to test that they're averaging 50 pounds. The most recent batch provided a sample weight of 49.1 pounds. It is important that the bales be relatively consistent as well. The historical population standard deviation is known to be 3.37 and is considered to be an acceptable maximum. So that's setting an upper limit to what we want our standard deviation or variance to be. I say or variance because these are functions of each other. We're actually going to be testing the variance. So this is going to give us our hypothesized value. I won't use 3.37, I'll be using 3.37 squared, so 11.36. So that is our acceptable maximum variance uh, that we will, we will allow. However, in a recent sample, the standard deviation was found to be 3.97, and so that corresponds then to a sample variance of 3.97 squared, 15.76. Using a level of significance of alpha 0.05 test to determine whether the variance in the size of hay bales is within the acceptable range. Okay, so here we have our null and our alternative. We want it to be within the acceptable range, and it's told us that here we have a maximum, uh, a maximum standard deviation of 3.37, which means a maximum. Uh, variance of 11.36 and we want to be no more than 11.36 so are we within it we assume oops let me fix my notation so here's our unknown population variance is it less than or equal to 11.36 or is it greater than 11.36 so if we fail to reject the null hypotheses then that means that we are no more than our maximum. The worst case scenario, we're 11.36, or we're less than 11.36. If the evidence supports the alternative hypotheses, well then that means that we are exceeding our maximum acceptable variance, and so probably you have to fix some problem, take some action. Okay, so we've got part A done. Test this at the alpha 05 level of significance. Okay, so we've got our level of significance. Now let's develop our test statistic. So here the formula that you're going to reach for is that chi-squared formula. N minus 1 S squared divided by the hypothesized value sigma squared. And so it's just a matter of plugging in our numbers. Here I've got 30 as my sample size. 30 minus 1. This is 3.97 squared, which I already know what that's going to be, divided by, here's that hypothesized value, 3.37 squared. 3.37 squared is our variance. And now we can just plug those uh, values into our calculator and see what we get. So 30 minus 1, this would be 29 times 3.97 squared equals divided by 3.37 squared equals 40.25 40 40.25 40 40 okay there's our test statistic so next step 
as always, we go to our tables. This case, this is a chi-squared distribution. We need to go to our chi-squared tables. We need to know, of course, degrees of freedom. Still n minus one, so in this case, it's 29. It's 30 minus one. So we go to our chi-squared. First column, degrees of freedom. Down here we have 29 degrees of freedom. And so now, like the t-tables, we can really ignore most of the information in here. All I need to really concern myself with are the probabilities at the top, which you'll note these are upper tail probabilities, and these critical values that correspond to those probabilities. So if we go back, uh, what was our test statistic was 40.25. So I want to find where does 40.25 exist? Well, it's between these two values, which means that my probability is between these two values, 0.1 and 0.05. And this is a upper tail test, and that is giving me upper tail probabilities, so I don't have to make any adjustments to these values, those are my p-values. So I have my p-value is less than 0.01, greater than 0.05. Let me just confirm that I haven't made a mistake, 0.01 and 0.05, good. So we've got everything we need for our p-value approach. If that p-value, the same rejection rule, always with the p-value. If it's less than or equal to alpha, we can reject. Here it is greater than alpha, so we do not reject uh, this null hypothesis. A sample variance of 15.76, which corresponds to a sample standard deviation of 3.97, this does not provide us with sufficient evidence to reject uh, that null hypothesis, meaning I am unable to say that we are exceeding our acceptable maximum variance in our bales of hay. Good, let's go through uh, part D. We'll look at our critical value approach now. So part D, again, alpha is 0.05. So we go through and then we'll get, uh, here's 0.05 here. Our critical value is 42.55. Uh, so here we have this chi-squared distribution. I don't know what it's going to look like. We have a critical value, 42.55, 557. That gives us that area in the upper tail equal to alpha 0.05. And our test statistic our chi-squared value was 40.25, so that's down here, 40.25. As an upper tail test, we would only reject if our test statistic was larger than that critical value. It is most certainly not larger, it is smaller than that critical value, so this is our do not reject space. Good. So there we have it. We have insufficient evidence to show that we have a problem. We appear to be on target, or at least we are within the acceptable range for the variance in the size of our hay bales. Okay, good. That's all there is to it. I hope that that was um, helpful for you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.